Father, thank you that we can anticipate the return of your Son, Jesus Christ. We can anticipate the day when your world will be filled with your glory. We long for that. Lord, I pray that as we long for that, we would serve you well now, we would remember you well in this time, and I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Please turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 3. As we remember Jesus around the Lord's table this morning, we're going to see how Jesus used a conversation with an ignorant Pharisee to reveal God's design for the salvation of the lost. Nicodemus has come to see Jesus at night, and he knows that God is with Jesus, but he has no understanding of the essential role that Jesus will play in the salvation of the lost. So let's read from John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18 together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world would be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This passage tells us that there are two kinds of people in the world. In verse 18, we see that there are those who are judged and there are those who are not judged. First, the one who is judged. The one who does not believe has been judged already. He has been judged already. The condition in which he does not believe is not really an objective fact. It's more a subjective truth. It's God's assessment of that person. It's as if God is looking at that person and saying, I know you. I know you well. I know all about you. And I know that you do not believe in my son. That person, the one who does not believe in God's son, the person that God knows does not believe in God's son, that person has been judged already. And this is a judgment that is against them because that person has not believed in the only begotten Son of God. There are two verbs here. There's a verb of being judged, and there's a verb of not believing. And both of those are conditions that have been true in the past that continue to be true in the present time. The person has been judged because he has not believed in Jesus. So the unbelieving person remains judged because they remain in their condition of unbelief. The other kind of person is the one who is not judged. He who believes is not judged. This person, their belief is a real, it is a present reality in their life, and so is their security. They are not judged. This person has a peace of mind in knowing that they will never face God's wrath and God's judgment upon themselves. So we have two groups of people. One is judged and one is not judged. And the earlier verses, verses 16 and 17, help us understand how that has come to be. Verse 16 tells us that God loved the world in a very specific, very certain way. God's love for the world was manifested in a way that we never could, we would never think of. And that is that God loved the world and that he gave. He gave of himself. He gave his only son. And the verb here, to give, means to care for the interests of another. God sent his son into this world to address a condition, and that condition was a condition in which we would perish in our unbelief. And to perish is to be delivered up to eternal misery. And that misery would be the experience of dealing with God's response to our sin forever. That would be absorbing every ounce of God's fury and anger and wrath against us for the infinite offense that our sin is against him. The one who is released from this is the one who believes in him, the one who believes in Jesus. And two things are very important here. The first is what belief itself is, and the second is what is the object of that belief. To believe is to possess faith in something. 
happens to have a characteristic or a property about yourself. It's something that can be said about you. It's not a decision you make. It's something that's in you. It's something about you. And we see in verse 16 that the belief, the object of that belief is Jesus, and belief in Jesus. Specifically, it's the conviction that Jesus took on himself the judgment that I deserve for my sin against God. Jesus' earthly mission was a rescue mission. In verse 17, we read that God did not send Jesus into the world to judge the world. As we look at verse 18, we realize that Jesus didn't need to come into this world to judge the world because the unbeliever is already judged by their unbelief. Instead, God's design is to send a mediator into this world that people would believe and be saved in that belief. So God is clear in his design for salvation. He's also very clear in the characteristics of those who are saved. We look down at verse 21. It says, He who practices the truth comes into the light so that his deeds may be manifested as having been wrought in God. If the characteristic of your life is that you come to Christ, you come under his lordship, you come under his mastership of your life, and you live in a way that can only be explained by the transforming work of God in your life, would you join us in taking the elements today? As the elements come to you, hold them, and ponder God's goodness for giving you the belief in Jesus Christ as your Savior. At the end of the verse, we see that the person's deeds are manifested as having been wrought in God. To be wrought in God is to be reworked by God for his use and for his glory, to be changed by God. So to have an ongoing pattern of sin in your life is to ignore God's work in your life, a work that makes you able to succeed in your battle against sin. So believer, if you're here today and there's an ongoing pattern of sin in your life, you must understand that God has given you everything you need to be successful in the war against that sin. Forsake that sin, turn from that sin, run away from that sin this morning, and join us in taking the elements in a worthy manner. Verse 20 tells us that the unbelieving man does not come to the light. He doesn't come to Christ. The Lord's table is for those who do come to Christ. It's for people who come to Christ and they come under his mastership and their lordship in his life. If you're unwilling to submit to Jesus, if you don't submit to Jesus as your Lord and your master and your savior, this is not a time for you. This is a time for people to remember who believe in Jesus Christ, what Jesus Christ has done for them. You need to understand and remember that God's judgment is against you. And the reason why it is against you is because you remain in your unbelief. And there is one and only one response that will save a person who's in that condition, and that is to cry out to God to give you the belief that you need to place your trust and your confidence in Jesus as your Savior and as your Lord. I'll be available after the service. The other elders will be available well. And those as well as sitting in the row with you, any of us would love to talk with you and share with you what it means to come under Jesus as your master and your Lord. So men, come in service. When the elements come to you, take them on your own. And I'll close our time in prayer.